Anonymous calls itself the final boss of the internet. And sometimes it proves to be really fucking true. If you are going to violate the freedoms of the internet, you certainly better watch the fuck out. They are kind of the rude boys of activism. There's a real rough edge to them, which I think also is one reason why they garner so much love and hate from people, too. They represent a certain sort of chaotic freedom. The hacker ethos has a passion for truth. It, it wants what's real to be out there. And it uses kind of the Philip K. Dick definition of reality. And reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, refuses to go away. We stand for freedom. We stand for freedom of speech, the power of the people, the ability for them to protest against the government, to right wrongs. No censorship, especially online, but also in real life. We have members throughout society and all stratas of it worldwide, yet we have no leadership. It's a one voice. It's, it's not individual voices. That's why we don't show our faces. That's why we don't give our names. We're speaking as one, and it's a collective. Good timing. So the FBI shows up at 6 in the morning and they drag me out into the cold and there's guns and a little LED flashlight in the vest. It was really obnoxious. If you so much as sneeze on someone's tablet and the government's not happy about it, then you're a hacker. There's people that are, that are dying for a flag and they're being lied to. And maybe it's time for a new law. If I get the chance to do that, then so be it. And if 14 other people that are with me get a chance to do it, and so be it. You want to see Anonymous rise up? Try to shut down the message. Try to, try to squash the message. Try to chill our speech. Then you'll see what Anonymous can do. Right now, you could argue that the most powerful people on Earth are a bunch of nameless, faceless, 17 to 35 year olds. It's like the hacker ruling class, right? It's my community, it's my culture. I identify with anonymous. Whether they had a tiny, tiny part, or whether they had a, a substantive part in the Arab Spring, or a top lane Tunisia and Egypt, Egyptian governments, individual, young, nameless, faceless folks are having geopolitical impact. It's, it's, it's both exhilarating to realize that and terrifying to realize that. It kind of depends on how that power is. We are legion. We do not forget. Expect us. How the film started, I, I, um, I personally, the first time I ever heard about Anonymous was when they attacked um, uh, the Church of Scientology and, and Chinology, which is what Greg was just talking about. Um, and I was kind of amazed that, so I was kind of mesmerized by what was going on. And, um, but didn't start the documentary until they attacked uh, MasterCard, Visa, and PayPal in December of 2010 in protest for those companies cutting off financial services to WikiLeaks. And um, that's when this documentary started in earnest. And so I've been following uh, anonymous and uh, the hacktivists, other groups like Telecomics, for about a year, uh, or about a year and a, a half, I guess. And um, it's been a hell of a year. Uh, they've been on a, on a kind of rampage during that time. So the effort of the documentary is to understand where they came from, uh, what they want, and, and, the, and to basically listen to, listen to, I, I, I don't, I didn't think anything had been done. Uh, you see a lot of press stories about that are sensational, and I don't think anything had been done where you're you're kind of trying to figure out where it came from and what it is. I believe it's a, it's a culture, and so this is a, an attempt to define that culture. Um, so I wanted to, we actually had a, an agenda, but I, I want to also start with, um, it, seems, it seems like every time we have a major screening of the film, uh, something big happens with Anonymous, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, I, we went to, took this film to Park City, and on the trip there was the, the DDoS uh, blackout for soap. No, I'm sorry, the DDoS of soap, a blackout had happened the day before. Um, turns out those are the biggest D DDoS attacks in history up until this point. Um, and uh, uh, South by Southwest didn't disappoint. Last week was a big, uh, lots of development. So I, I kind of want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, the biggest one is uh, a figure that maybe I can help you guys, you guys can help me understand his place. Certainly there are no leaders in Anonymous, 
Um, I'm talking, of course, about uh, Sabu, who was arrested last week. Um, he was certainly the leader of LulzSec. Uh, or uh, it's, a, it's a bit a tough power. to use that word. It's a bit uh, tough, but it's he's kind of a dirty word. A powerful figure. Um, and uh, just to sort of say a, a little bit, I don't know if, w w just to paint the basic picture, he, he, he has been a powerful, uh, provocative figure um, on the scene with, within the last year. Uh, very controversial, even including within Anonymous, and um, and yet I always I always liken watching his uh, Twitter feed to, to watching a fist fight or something. He did, he was uh, it's hard to describe his personality, but as it turns out, he, he was, was vocal and angry. He was vocal and angry, and and responded to any slight with a string of uh, obscenities, and yet yes. somehow you couldn't take your eyes off him. Um, he's bottom line is it turns out he's a he's a gentleman named Hector Monsegur. Uh, living in a, uh, a housing project in uh, development in Lower East Side, Manhattan. And uh, he was an FBI informant for a good part of the last year. So uh, Anonymous is uh, uh, reacting to that news, I would say. Well, well, Greg, you can start. Tell, tell me what, what kind of figure was Sabu? Sabu was very vocal. He was very good at recruiting. Uh, you know, a lot of people would read what he had to say about the world and would think, ah, I believe that. You know, what what else is going on? And they'd go find other things to do with uh, with anonymous. But uh, beyond that, he had actually, you know, gotten pretty skilled at some of the things he was doing, getting into websites, things like that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say it was necessarily in the true form of a lot of hackers that'll you know get down to a root shell and whatnot. He was doing a lot of SQLI stuff, things like that. But He'd gotten really good at getting in and um, making it really sensational and getting the press to follow. And that was important. I mean, when you look at a lot of what he did, it actually just was to draw the press in. And um, a lot of Anons liked him for that, liked that he drew a lot of attention to what was going on. But at the same point, a lot of Anons hated him. He was a complete ass and would do things that most of them didn't agree with. Um, there's a surprising amount of people on the anonymous side that don't agree with a lot of the dumps of personal information of uh, the public, you know. I kind of ride the fence on that one, but uh, I, I, being honest, you know, but uh, it, it's an interesting interesting character uh, that is Hector, and, and the fact that he is an informant is also interesting in that when he was busted, there were a few Anons um, who spoke very clearly to the fact that this guy's acting a lot stranger this week after disappearing for a few days. Where was he? What's going on? And I actually uh, found some tweets just from those few days of when we now know he was actually arrested way back when, of people claiming that he was arrested, that they knew he was, that why doesn't he come out with it? And uh, I let everyone, talking, uh, I let everyone convince me that, uh, that I was wrong. I, I let everyone convince me that uh, the gut feeling that I had and that all these other people had that he had been arrested was wrong because so many other people wouldn't believe it. So when this happened, and we find out, you know, last week that he was actually an informant, the first thing, you know, all the people who were talking about it back then said was, well, damn it. You know, some people actually said this and no one believed. And uh, the next thing that everyone said was, well, this came out on Fox News, so it can't be true. Um, it took us a few hours to actually believe it because we waited for NPR and all these other places to actually report and, and swear up and down that they had sources of their own. And... Uh, at that point, then people started to believe and started to go back uh, through their chat history. What did I say to this man over the last four months? <laughs> Am I in trouble? Does right? he know my name? Yeah. You know, uh, that was an interesting day on IRC, watching them all do that. As an observer of Anonymous over the last year, um, and I, I have talked to uh, Sabu a number of times on IRC and once even on the phone. Um, he, uh, the most controversial aspects of what he brought and I'm talking about the discussion within Anonymous, the controversy, well, I guess every, everybody else too, the, the, <laughs> the two, fall into two categories. Let what you just alluded to, that large scale doxing of personal information of members of the public that may not be a part of the, uh, the confrontation or mm -hmm. maybe innocent bystanders. I have talked to a lot of people who identify as Anonymous who say we, anything we do needs to minimize that. Right, minimize the releasing yeah, of Minimize the effect on the actual public. In and the end, yet, you want to win them over to your side, not exactly. convince them that you're evil. And the idea is not to hurt people that, you know, innocence. The, uh, some people feel very, very, very strongly about that. And yet, Sabu uh, clearly didn't feel that way. It's uh, interesting having that conversation yeah. with him specifically, and even back when Kayla was around and all of them. You know, I, I sat in the middle of a conversation they had about this, and they justified it to themselves by saying that, 
no matter how many times you go to these people and you explain that giving this information to this website means the bad hackers, the people who are going to use it for identity theft, the people who are going to take your credit card and defraud you, yeah. they already have it. If we got in, this is their argument, then someone else beat us to it already and we're just proving the point that we got in. And telling you that, we get ignored. Telling the press that, no one wants to hear it, they don't print it. So we have to dump your data or you're not going to believe that it's already out there before we dumped it. Yeah, that's the and argument. That, that was the argument yeah. that they gave, and it's a tough one to argue with when you hear it. They're, they're very convincing. Uh, but that's, again, why I'm on the fence. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand that you know, getting the news to cover the fact that this site that has everyone's credit card isn't secure and we can prove it doesn't work until you prove it. That's a hacker ethos that kind of goes back pre-anonymous, I think. It goes back pretty far. Yeah, the other thing I want to get to quickly, and then I want to ask Anon, <clears throat> You know, there are people that feel very, very, very strongly. It's, it's hard to, it just, this, is a, this is a freedom of speech group. And they, and they believe, you know, attacking the press is wrong. We're a freedom of speech group, that's total hypocrisy. And again, uh, Sabu and Lalsec had no problem. I mean, uh, uh, full disclosure, I've done a couple, made a couple front lines myself as a documentary filmmaker. Yep. And they attacked, uh, they attacked Frontline for a, a, a the two story buck, that they that did. Tupac story was hilarious, though. And, well, that's the thing. It's uh, it, it's hard. It's it is hilarious. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to d d justify just so what they people did. know. If you don't know what that story is, they uh, Frontline did a story about Bradley Manning um, and uh, Lulsec members of Lulsec, other members of Anonymous were upset at the. Uh, the my interpretation is the interpretation, the psycho psychologizing of Bradley Manning, instead of focusing more on what he did and uh, what the documents meant and all of that. Um, so, Lulsec took down the McNeil Lair News Hour. Actually, just posted an, a new news story in the McNeil Lair News Hour uh, of their own that, that uh, announced that Tupac and Biggie uh, were actually, in fact, alive and residing in New Zealand. So, <laughs> and it looked, it was just straight up news hour. It looked uh, real. It, they it did looked a good real. Job. Yeah, it was, it was genuinely funny. But that's, that's the other thing attacking the press. You know, whenever that comes up on IRC, whenever you're watching any of the ops form, and especially when the press says something bad about Anonymous, there will be someone in the channels who says very clearly, we should attack that person. There, there's always that idiot. And, and I do refer to him as that idiot, because I think it's the dumbest thing we could possibly do. I think uh, Anonymous should not be attacking the press. Uh, again, you know, if, if I ever agreed with that, I would have to start to reconsider my thoughts on free speech. You know, uh, my ideology yeah, yeah. would completely have to flip for me to agree with this. And it, the surprising response is, shut up, get out of here, kick banning, being kicked off the servers. I mean, really, people who say that get treated wrong. And, yeah. it, and it's kind of one of the explanations for where Lulset kind of appeared. You know, they split off and did all of that stuff and then kind of disappeared and slowly came back in. And after uh, the few members of them that really started the anti-sec movement were, you know, again, part of anti-sec, you'll notice that stuff stopped. You know, they tried to do all that stuff that most of us and most of the people, you know, like our friend on Skype here, would not have agreed with under a different name. And I think that was on purpose. Um, I want to get your, your opinion on, on the events of last week, um, Anon 9000. What, what do you, what is your, what's your take on, on how that went down and what it means and what it means? Well, I think it's interesting that Sabu... Um, I, I feel like his uh, rhetoric was amped up after he reappeared from being arrested. Um, he was more provocative in, in speech and in action, I feel. Um, and there was even, you know, I heard a story that he um, offered to pay someone to do a hack for him, um, which I think raises interesting questions about um, how much input the FBI had on his actions. Um, and uh, what, what that means for the people who may be implicated um, along with him. Um, but to answer your question, I disagree. I disagree with um, attacking the press. I disagree with um, dumping um, people's data. I felt, you know, when I got into this, I, I felt like Anonymous was um, was a, a group of groups who who fought for the for the users. You know, we, we fight for the users, um, and, and to see. And to see people um, getting DDoSed and um, censored wide scale by, you know, a few people, um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm with, uh, I'm, I'm with Greg. I'm on the fence about DDoS. I, I, there's a, there's a pretty good uh, argument 
that it's a form of censorship? DDoS, um, denial of service attacks. Correct. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one to to really navigate through. I mean, we're we're not we're, we're not as rational as we think we are, but we are rationalizing. We like to rationalize our actions. <laughs> well, well put. Um, one more thought on, just to play on what you just said on Sabu, and I, I want to move on. I'm realizing we don't actually have a lot of time. Um, 